Everyone in Europe is eating bread, drinking wine and staying up late, but they're still significantly skinnier than Americans. It's even more interesting to hear people from America going to Europe and eating things like bread and pizza and still losing weight. But when they eat those same foods in America, they gain weight. Why is that so? In this video, I'm going to look at the main reasons why Europe has a much lower rate of obesity than America. And I'll share with you some ideas how you can also eat bread and pasta and cannolis like the Italians while staying healthy. So make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. First, is it even true that Europeans are skinnier than Americans? In the European Union, only 53% of the population has a BMI over 25, which is considered overweight. Out of those people, 17% are obese, which starts with a BMI over 30. However, in the United States, the amount of people considered overweight is over 75% and obese over 35%. That's 20% more people who are overweight or obese and more than twice the amount of people with obesity. That's quite a staggering difference, especially given the fact that these regions are very similar in socioeconomic status and development. The most obvious reason for that is food quantity. How much food is eaten. In the European Union, the average daily supply of calories per person is 3,500, but in the United States is 3,900. That's a 400 calorie difference in the average availability of calories between these regions, which can explain some of the differences. However, 400 calories isn't enough to explain the double the amount of obesity in America. American food has a much higher amount of calories as a baseline. In Italy and Spain, the dishes are prepared in a more traditional way that reduces the amount of fat and sugar. A New York style pizza is very high in fat and calories, whereas a traditional pizza margarita in Italy has very little calories. It just has tomatoes, olive oil and cheese. The New York pizza has a lot more cheese and sauces and sausages, which almost doubles the amount of calories. So the food in Europe is generally healthier and with lower amounts of calories. In the US, fast food is the main food for a lot of people because it's convenient, fast and delicious, but it's usually twice as high in calories as regular meals. Secondly, the portion sizes are also very different. In Europe, the food portion sizes are much smaller than in America. Every food portion size is much bigger in the US than in the EU, including drinks, salads, steaks, pastas and pizzas. What about the macros? A lot of people like to say that it's either fats or carbs that is causing obesity. As of 2021, Americans ate 3,900 calories a day, out of which 341 came from animal protein, 155 from plant protein, 1,600 from fat and 1,800 from carbohydrates. Europeans ate 400 fewer calories, so 35 out of which 288 came from animal protein, 165 from plant protein, 1377 from fat and 1722 from carbohydrates. So that's quite interesting. There's not a massive difference between the macros of Americans and Europeans. Europeans eat slightly more plant protein and less animal protein than Americans, but the difference isn't that significant. There is a significant difference in the amount of fat consumed. Europeans eat about 300 less calories of fat than Americans, which is roughly 33 grams of fat per day. The carbohydrate intake is very identical. Both regions eat about 1800 calories from carbohydrates per day. That's only a 20 gram carb difference. And it turns out that Europeans have a lower daily calorie intake primarily because of eating less fat. This means that Europeans are eating still higher carb meals. They eat the same amount of carbs as Americans. It's just that those meals have less dietary fat. But this is not the only reason why Europeans are skinnier than Americans. A lot of people in Europe cook their own food. At least in Estonia, where I grew up in, everyone makes their own food at home and people don't go to restaurants that often. People also go to fast food restaurants much less often, which is the bigger reason. This can be a major contributor to weight gain. The food in restaurants, takeout and fast food restaurants can have almost twice the amount of calories as the homemade version. Frozen pre-made meals at the store, like frozen pizza, frozen stews, etc. are also usually a lot higher in calories. It's seen that in European countries, people get about 14 to 44% of their calories from ultra processed foods, whereas in the USA, it's up to 60%. So people in America are eating more highly processed foods that can encourage overeating and worsen metabolic health. So the hack here is to either cook a lot of your meals at home or to choose the restaurants that list out the calories and the ingredients, because a lot of the restaurants don't actually tell you how many calories that meal has. 
The next reason has to do with transportation. In the US, the automobile is the main form of transportation for the vast majority of people. America was made for cars and individual drivers. You can see it in the unhospitable public transportation and massive roads that take up a lot of space. Everything is also at an inconvenient distance away. The store or gym is usually not close enough to walk and far enough to take the car, which is why Americans are driving everywhere and they walk much less. In Europe, the distances between places are much smaller and people are living in small cities, where it's actually much easier to walk or take the public transport. In the EU, public transport is much more developed and more functional, which makes it a better alternative to driving in a lot of cases. You don't have to walk very far either, as most things are only a 10 to 20 minute walk away. The cities are also very friendly to cyclists, and in places like the Netherlands or Sweden, a lot of people just cycle to work, even if it takes them 20 to 30 minutes. In the USA, convenient access to public transport in 2020 was only 58%, whereas in the EU countries, it's above 90% on average and up to 95. Walking is a very underrated form of exercise and it does help you to burn a significant amount of calories per day. So it doesn't matter where you live or how healthy you are, you would still want to walk every day. So the question is how much? Walking 10,000 steps a day significantly reduces postprandial lipidemia, the rise in lipids after eating, compared to 2,000 steps, which reduces the risk of cardiovascular disease. A 2023 meta-analysis on over 1,100,000 participants saw that walking 8,700 steps a day compared to taking 2,000 steps a day was linked to a 60% reduction in risk of all-cause mortality. Taking 16,000 steps per day resulted in an additional 5% reduction in risk of all-cause mortality. So walking at least 8,000 steps a day does appear to reduce the risk of mortality quite a lot. But if you walk up to 16,000 steps a day, then you gain a small but a still significant benefit. When it comes to deliberate exercise, then 56% of people in the USA are exercising regularly, whereas in the EU, this number varies a lot. In the Netherlands, 65% of people exercise regularly, whereas in Italy, it's 59%, in Spain, 56%, in Sweden, 51%, and in France, 50%. So it's not a massive difference between regular exercise in the US and Europe. Americans and Europeans exercise a very similar amount. So the reason why Americans are still more obese and overweight probably has to do with the fact that they eat more calories. So if you are exercising regularly, but you're eating 400 more calories per day, then you are still going to gain weight or it's much harder for you to lose weight because you're still eating more calories. Or it could also be that the 44% of the Americans who don't exercise regularly, they're just so obese that they make up for this statistic. So the 56% of Americans might be more normal body weight, but the 44% who aren't are just kind of skewing the data because of their more severe obesity. Or it could be the other way as well, that the Europeans who don't exercise, they're just skinnier because of the other lifestyle factors. Another thing worth mentioning is the food regulations. The European Union is known for having banned a lot of the ingredients and foods that are still available in the USA. A lot of the junk foods in Europe are also with different ingredients than in the US because of these regulations. So even the junk food in the EU is healthier than in the US. Bread products with azotic carbamide and potassium bromate are banned in the EU, whereas they're allowed in the US. In the US, companies use these chemicals as a whitening and raising agent. These chemicals are banned in Europe because they're possible carcinogens. There's no data that these ingredients would be harmful to your health, but it just highlights the differences in regulations. European Union is much stricter with kind of the foods that is allowed to be sold. And this also includes the obesogenic ingredients such as added sugars and fats. Frosted flakes and rice krispies with butylated hydroxytoluene BHT are also banned in Europe. BHT is a flavor enhancer that enhances taste. A lot of the cereal companies like Cinnamon Toast Crunch have removed BHT, which is why they taste completely different than in the US. So the cereal in the US tends to be more hyperpalatable that can promote overeating. The EU has also banned different growth hormones and growth enhancers cancers in livestock, such as ractopamine. These promote the growth of animals and they could cause beta adrenergic stimulation, which could be harmful to the heart. The problem with different ingredients and chemicals in food is only relevant if you're eating a lot of processed foods. If you're not eating a lot of processed foods, then it doesn't matter what kind of chemicals are in processed foods because you're not eating them. And eating predominantly whole foods is one of the easiest ways to lose weight because the processed foods typically come with added calories, added sugars and added fats. So if you want to reduce your calorie intake and you want to lose some weight, 
then the easiest thing to do is just eliminate some of the processed foods. Lastly, government policies in the EU tend to promote healthier lifestyles than in the US. We already talked about transportation. In the EU, the cities are much friendlier to walking, cycling and public transportation. There's also a lot of open parks and outdoor gyms, which make it easier for people to exercise. Most countries in Europe also have government-provided healthcare, whereas that's not the case in the US. Healthcare and cost of health services in the US are one of the highest in the world. That makes it much more difficult for Americans to stay healthy in their obesogenic environment. However, you don't need healthcare to prevent obesity or diabetes. Healthcare is useful for treating those conditions and counteracting the harmful effects of obesity and diabetes. But you don't need any healthcare to prevent these diseases because they're mostly caused by lifestyle. So here is an overview about the differences between Europe and America that explains the higher rates of obesity in the US. Number one, Americans eat about 400 more calories per day and that's coming from dietary fat. To be honest, that fat probably comes from ultra processed food and the added fats in foods. Number two, Americans eat more ultra processed food in general and junk food. 60% in America versus 14 to 44% in Europe. Number three, the portion sizes in America are much larger than in Europe. You don't need to be completely stuffed and if you feel unsatiated after your meals, then try increasing the fiber and protein. Replace the fatty and sugary meals with more protein and fiber. Number four, Americans walk less and use less public transport, whereas Europeans tend to walk a lot more. I follow this rule that if the destination where I need to go is less than 15 minutes of walking away, then I just walk there. And if it's over 30 minutes away, then I tend to drive there. And lastly, Americans and Europeans exercise a similar amount. And there might be more Americans who are exercising regularly. Exercise is helpful for many things beyond weight loss. And even if you don't lose weight, exercise will improve your health. However, if you exercise but still eat too many calories, you're not going to lose weight. That's why it's important to focus on your diet quality and quantity as well. Overall, the obesity rates in Europe are rising <laughs> the same way they're rising in America and the rest of the world pretty much like China, Russia, Middle East, all these regions are seeing a rise in obesity because of this westernized and modern industrialized lifestyle pattern. The principle I outlined in this video will apply to all parts of the world. So implement these tips if you're trying to lose weight. And you can check out my video about my evidence-based weight loss routine in the description. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.